All right, little kitty. Tell me, what's the quickest way to get from the North Pole to the South Pole? <laughs> I guess just dig a hole. <laughs> Aha! Now, that is an interesting idea. But trust me, it's a journey packed with danger. Why? Ah, let me dig into that by answering a very deep question. What if you dug a hole through the earth? Zoom in. Imagine sitting on a specially built drill, ready to bore through the earth from one side to the other. At first, it might seem like a thrilling idea. Just dive into a tunnel, free fall at incredible speeds, and shoot out from the other side of the planet like a human bullet. But as cool as it sounds, this journey is a recipe for disaster. Let's break down why. You see, Earth isn't just dirt and rock. It's a layered structure. Each layer more intense than the last. So the first challenge we'll be facing is drilling through the crust, the outermost layer, about 60 miles thick. This is where we live. And even though it sounds manageable, digging deep is no easy task. The deepest hole ever drilled here is the Kola Super Deep Borehole in Russia which only reached 7.6 miles. And that's barely a scratch on the surface. Yes, go deeper and you'd face skyrocketing pressure 4,000 times more than sea level and temperatures hot enough to melt steel. But let's keep going through the crust and enter the mantle a 1,740-mile-thick layer of molten rock and shifting tectonic plates. Temperatures here soar to over 2,570 degrees Fahrenheit, and a regular drill would melt instantly. So to survive this part of the journey, you'd need a drill made of incredibly tough materials like titanium. Next comes the outer core, a swirling sea of molten iron and nickel about 1,800 miles below the surface. Temperatures here range between 7,200 Fahrenheit and 9,000 Fahrenheit, basically a giant ocean of lava. And because it's a liquid metal, digging through it would be like trying to carve a path through molten soup. Still, for the sake of imagination, let's say you keep going. If you somehow make it past the outer core, you'll reach the inner core. Here the pressure is over 350 million times what we experience on the surface. Even though temperatures remain scorching, the immense pressure keeps the iron and nickel solid. At this point, your drill would be under unimaginable stress, likely destroyed long before reaching the other side. But let's suppose you manage to leave the inner core. As you pass the Earth's center, gravity starts pulling you back toward the side you originally came from, rather than continuing toward the other side. The further you move away from the center, the stronger gravity becomes, making it feel like you're being dragged back again. The outer core, molten and turbulent, is just as tough to navigate the second time. Plus, now gravity is actively resisting your movement. After fighting your way back through the outer core, you'd re-enter the mantle, where the heat and pressure are still extreme. Yet, as you climb closer to the surface, gravity eases up and drilling becomes slightly less grueling. Finally, you reach the crust again, which, compared to the inner Earth, seems like a breeze. 
And then you've done it. You've drilled through the entire planet, traveling thousands of miles through rock, molten metal and intense heat. But what's the result? Well, unless you're careful, you might pop out in the middle of the ocean or in someone's backyard. Since most of the Earth's surface is covered by water, you'd probably end up swimming with the fish. What an anticlimactic end to a wild journey! Trivia time! Did you know the boundary between the mantle and the crust is called the moho? Yes, it's short for mohorobichich. Discontinuity. Sketching time! Today's sketch of the day goes to Helia. Hope you had fun today. Until next time, it's me, Dr. Binox, zooming out.